all right we are going to discuss ischemic heart diseases and this video is prepared for the second round of Elsevier uh, to begin with ischemic heart diseases and it is very important to note that ischemic heart disease is not a single disease and these are the group of clinical pathological syndrome and which are produced due to imbalance between the oxygen supply or oxygen need generally this imbalance is created when there is decrease in the oxygen supply or when there is increase in the oxygen need suppose you have a piece of myocardium and the dependable part of the coronary artery supplying that myocardium undergoes the obstruction so that the oxygen supply is decreased either or the myocardium that has hypertrophied uh, it has undergone the need of the more oxygen uh, ultimately this would produce relative ischemia and ultimately these are the factors which are responsible for production of ischemic heart disease this can be myocardial infarction it is very important to note that the difference between the ischemia as well as the isolated hypoxemia ischemia uh, if you have a coronary artery and that has undergone the obstruction so if you have a left heart suppose and this is the aorta and this is the coronary artery that has completely undergone obstruction so the area distal to that artery will be uh, will be lacking these three things suppose uh, obviously there will be oxygen in addition to oxygen there is nutrition as well in addition to nutrition there is also in a inability to uh, wash out the metabolical waste so there is decrease in the capability to wash out metabolical waste so these are the three features of the ischemia whereas in isolated hypoxemia there is only decrease in the oxygen and this can be uh, presented anemia uh, here the oxygen carrying capacity of the blood is decreased decreased and as well as in the chronic lung diseases uh, here the oxygen carried by the blood is decreased and here the oxygen carrying capacity of the blood decreased so that is why it is said that ischemia is more dangerous than the isolated hypoxemia because there is deprivation of all the three factors and here there is only the decrease in the oxygen supplied to the myocardium also it is more common in the left ventricle it is very important to note that the 99 percent of the cases are undergoing myocardial infarction and the place is the left ventricle there are several reasons why left ventricle is more vulnerable to ischemic heart disease one being it is more thick and the right ventricle is thin and the pressure changes in the left ventricles are 0 to 120 m of hg and in the right ventricle the pressure changes are hardly from 0 to 20 to 25 mmHg you may know that the left ventricle strangulates its own blood supply during the systole and left ventricle is dependent mainly uh, mainly for its blood supply during diastole so uh, the the patients having very hypertrophied left ventricle and say um, uh, it is undergoing tachycardia so it is more vulnerable for ischemic heart disease and left ventricle is obviously more vulnerable for the ischemic heart diseases because obviously it strangulates its own blood supply also the pressure changes are very high now we are going to focus on the fed, uh, individually on the factors which decrease the oxygen supply or the factor which increase the oxygen need. First of all, we will focus on these factors which decrease the oxygen supply. The classical example being the atheromas. These are classified under the coronary artery diseases and the atheromas can be of two types, the stable atheromas and the vulnerable atheromas. And if suppose this is the lumen of the artery right and this has undergone the changes which is the aceromal change so this is the dysfunctional uh, these are the classical content of the atheromas 
the dysfunctional endothelium and the fibrous cap which is consisting of smooth muscle as well as collagen and the foam cells or the macrophages inside them and a lipid content and beside the uh, below the endothelium uh, there is a presence of what is called as basement membrane this is the uh, in the stable atheromas the fibrous cap is thick whereas in vulnerable atheromas the fibrous cap is thin these vulnerable atheromas may undergo erosion or ulceration now what is erosion or ulceration when there is disruption of the endothelial membrane and there is exposure of thrombogenic basement membrane this is called erosion or ulceration the next term is fissuring or rupturation this is the case when there is um, disruption of endothelium as well as basement membrane and there is exposure of highly thrombogenic material inside the plaque this is called feature for fissuration or rupturation and this um, these condition may precipitate for the pre, uh, precipitate for aggregation of the platelets and sometimes the more unfortunate patient release the tissue factors and there may be deposition of the fibrin strands this is called the thrombus formation so these can lead to the thrombus formation and moreover this thrombus um, can undergo emboli and this thrombus hole can be removed and this can undergo embolism this is called thromboembolism and th in the very very unfortunate patient uh, the whole thing is ruptured and these fatty material which is highly thrombogenic is embolied which is called atheroembolism so you have two type of emboli that is called thromboembolism and this is called atheroembolism moreover the platelets also release uh, the thromboxin a2 which is the vasoconstriction which can also lead to decrease in oxy oxygen supply and which can also precipitate the ischemic heart disease so these are the classification of the atheromas the stable and the vulnerable atheromas the next factor being uh, responsible for decrease in oxygen supply, uh, this is the coronary artery stenosis. This is more found in the person suffering from syphilis. This is also called leutic aortitis. Next is aortic dissection. Suppose you have, this is the left heart, this is the aorta and these are the layers of the aorta and sometimes these may undergo rupturation and blood goes to the layers of the aorta this is called the aortic dissection and aortic dissection is more common in the person suffering from hypertension or Marfan syndrome and this may ultimately block the coronary artery and lead to ischemic heart disease the next is coronary artery vasculitis suppose this is the coronary artery right and and uh, this is the inflammatory lesion in the coronary artery and this can ultimately lead to stenosis and this keeps on irritating the endothelium of the coronary artery which later turns to dysfunctional endothelium and which becomes thrombogenic which is more dangerous and this is coronary artery vasculitis are more common in person suffering for poly suffering from polyarteritis nodosa or kawasaki syndrome the next is thromb emboli we have already discussed this can be of two types the thromboembolism as well as atheroembolism next is polycythemia vera where the blood count increases and the blood viscosity increases and it can lead to ischemia this is very very important the prolonged hypotension if you take classically example if a person is sitting in a dentist chair and suddenly undergo vasovagal shock and you may find uh, the that, that the person or the patient have already scaled his teeth but it has undergone myocardial infarction what is the reason suppose this is the left heart and this is the aorta and these are the coronary arteries the coronary artery perfusion pressure is mainly maintained by the aortic pressure so if there is prolonged hypotension that is decrease in the pressure of the aorta ultimately decrease in the coronary perfusion pressure and this can lead to decrease in the oxygen supply and decrease in almost all the factors and this can lead to myocardial ischemia 
so if you have a patient and that is having multiple atherosclerotic lesion you should take care during the surgery of any of the procedure that you don't let this patient to expose under prolonged hypotension next is syndrome x we are generally um, during angiography we are finding the lesions and we are finding the side of the blockage but if a patient comes to you and he says that having he's having classical angina and you find in coronary angiography that there are no obstruction the possibility is that suppose this is a coronary artery these are generally found in the epicardium and these coronary arteries are having branch inside the epicardium sometimes these are dysfunctional these are not you know responding to the uh, epinephrine these are not dilated and produce ischemia this undergoes uh, the syndrome x now we have discussed the uh, factors which increases the need of the oxygen this is left ventricular hypertrophy obviously i have said that left ventricle strangulates its own blood supply so if it is undergoing hypertrophy it is more vulnerable to ischemic heart disease and obviously the heart rate this is very important the heart rate is divided into um, the cardiac cycle is divided into the systole and the diastole and we have discussed that the heart especially the left ventricle is only exposed to the blood supply during diastole whenever there is increase in the heart rate this is the diastole which is decreasing so you are decreasing the perfusion time for the left ventricle so if a patient is having atherosclerotic lesions uh, there um, and the heart rate is very high or during the tachycardia these are more vulnerable to disease uh, to cause the ischemic heart disease obviously during pregnancy the overall cardiac demands are increased and also in the hypothyroid hyperthyroidism the overall metabolism is increased this is how uh, there is imbalance between the oxygen supply as well as oxygen need and this can precipitate the ischemic heart disease remember these are not a single heart diseases this is not a single heart disease these are indeed a group of clinical pathological syndrome which precipitates and form the ischemic heart disease this was about the ischemic heart disease thanks for watching Thank you.